This is the MDRT Podcast. Sometimes advisors may feel like marriage counselors, and it is never pleasant to sit there as a couple fights in your office. During a recent conversation at MDRT headquarters, Stephen Janoff from Bartons in Australia, Everett Fox, Richmond, Virginia, Brandon Green, Houston, Texas, Dana Mitchell, Toronto, Ontario, Discuss the benefits of letting clients work through their disagreements and how advisors can help everyone get on the same page. And in the old days, we were taught the ping pong concept. You know, when the one uh, spouse defers to the other, if that uh, ball goes across the net three or four times, you're, you're pretty much going to lose control. And I had a situation where the spouses were arguing and the discussion was about how much coverage was appropriate. And finally, I stepped in, I said, is it okay if I ask a question? And the client looked at me and said, so you're a marriage counselor? And I said, no, but if it's okay, let me talk to your spouse. I think I might be able to solve this for you. And and he smiled and he looked at me and he said, okay, go ahead. And so I turned to the, the wife and I said, okay, so what if we had X amount of coverage? And she said, I just wanna make sure I'm okay. Okay, and what if we had Y amount of coverage? And we go down this process of doubling and tripling, quadrupling the coverage, and at each point, her response was the same. At that point in time, I turned to the husband and said, tell your wife it's going to be okay. And he looked at me, and he turned to her, and he said, honey, with everything else we have in place, the other coverages, this will be enough. You're going to be okay. And she looked at him and said, that sounds great. I think with any couple, there's going to be a decision maker from that couple. And I think early on, you need to identify who the decision maker is. Sometimes you only meet with one of the couple and sometimes you you meet with both. And quite often you do want to make sure that when it comes to the final decision that they both are in the room for that part where they're deciding on what they would like to proceed with. I had a situation early this year where I had a couple who I'd met with together probably a month before. We agreed on a level of cover for them both to have. And when we came to the final meeting that month later, they'd sat down and said, look, Stephen, you you aren't going to like this. And I'm like, okay, what's going on? And they said, well, we've decided we're only going to go ahead with a little bit of life insurance and a little bit of total and permanent disability insurance. We're not going to go ahead with income protection. I felt that at that time that the life cover and the income protection were the most important areas of their plan. And I spent a couple of minutes just, again, reiterating the reasons why I felt that that was the case. And for one of the few times I've ever done this, I actually left the room for 10 minutes to allow them to discuss it amongst themselves. I was only out of the room for about five minutes and I actually got called in to say that they were ready to see me again. And I wasn't sure what to expect from this, but when I walked in, they sat there and and the decision maker he says to me Stephen you're right we've had another think about it we're going to go ahead with what you've suggested so that was a nice relief at first I felt it was going to be a bit of a risk for me but I felt that I needed to, to put on the table right then and there what I felt that they were going to be missing out on by not going ahead with a very very important coverage which was going to be the income protection so I'm glad that they had that discussion and I'm glad that I gave them a bit of space to discuss amongst themselves while I was in there in the office to come back and come to a, a much better decision, in my opinion. I think most of the conflicts I've seen between couples in the office, and it does definitely happen, is surrounding understanding what it costs to run the household. I think that one person may look after you know, certain expenses and one person looks after other expenses, and I think that sometimes there's not a clear understanding of the full picture, and then that's where you know, oh, we don't need that amount of coverage or, oh, we need more coverage comes from is really not understanding what it what it takes to run the household. In order to manage that, when we do the initial plan, we make sure we do a budget and, and know what their spending is like so that we can come back to that budget and say, okay, well, we did a budget when we did your wealth planning and your wealth accumulation planning. This is what you've got right now. This is what you've got willing to save. If that X amount is what we have insured, then we're just going to have to cut this budget down. So let's just sit here and talk about this amount, you know, in a meaningful way and cut the budget down to see if that amount of coverage is right. When you take it off the back and forth between, you know, our lifestyle is expensive or it doesn't cost this and bring it down to real numbers, it diffuses that argument and it brings the attention on really what do we need and what would we cut and then you're talking about real things because when you talk about cutting the amount in half that can happen on paper but what does it mean for the real picture and do both people understand that i think back on the occurrences where i had couples that were 
disagreeing with the plan that was put in place. What I recognize, and I think it goes a little bit to what Brandon was saying, they're not really understanding each other at that point and what the overall goal of that plan is. So I will ask both of the parties each. So what's most important to you at this point? Because maybe I'm not understanding or maybe your spouse is not understanding what's really important to you at this time. So um, in that case, maybe I am a marriage counselor. I don't know. But I think they just want to, to understand each other, their, their goals. And uh, sometimes there's a compromise. Because And then, you know, I'm, I'm there. I'm kind of mediating. But at the same time, if we're all heading in the same direction, we may have to compromise just a little here to make everyone happy. Do experiences like that teach you something about the way people communicate? It's interesting when you first get in the business, the role that I see most advisors take on is really more of a cop. You need to do this. These are the consequences if you don't. And, you know, slowly we move from that function to more of a a coach and then ultimately a consultant. And it's, it's really understanding as you get more seasoned, when do you stand in each of those roles? and every situation is a little bit different and sometimes all within the same meeting you might have to fill every single one of those roles. I think it's really important not to take it personally. I think that when you're sitting in front of two people and they start to conflict, it, you can immediately think, uh oh, what did I say? How did I cause this? And maybe it's how they communicate. I think couples have very different communication styles and I've learned that just to make sure that you're talking about real numbers and you're talking about the information, but also let them communicate in the way that they're going to communicate. Some clients don't say a lot to another in a meeting. Some speak a little bit louder than you might be comfortable with, but maybe that is their style and maybe they're okay with that. I was on a conference call with a couple and I think I said maybe 5% of the words and they spoke a lot louder than, I mean, I'm accustomed to speaking to my husband on, but at the end of the day, it was a good result and it was absolutely fine. So I think you have to respect that relationships have dynamics and you just have to be okay with that. That's a great point, Dana. A lot of it is understanding when clients just need space. A lot of times they're, they're just statements. They're not objections and giving them enough time to process the discussions they're having with each other as well as you and just waiting and watching. A lot of times you really don't have to keep going down that path. They just need to process it and by getting it out, it helps them to think more clearly. Absolutely. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon, especially when it comes to any financial plan. And I think even though they may have engaged you initially and they had objectives of setting up some sort of coverage and then you fast forward to those further meetings where they are bickering a little bit, potentially the expectations on how long it took for everything to be completed was a bit different from your perspective compared to theirs. They might have thought it was going to be a three to six month process. You were hoping it would be done in in three to four weeks and and potentially then you just need to give them a bit more time. As Brandon said, I think that you just need to be patient uh, in those instances. And Dana made a great point. I think just acknowledging that there are different dynamics in different households and respecting those dynamics. But I like to focus on the things that we can agree on. Let's focus on the things that we do agree on in this meeting. And then let's prioritize those things and kind of see where they fall in ranking with those things that we don't agree on. Thank you for listening to this month's episode. If you'd like to subscribe, find us on SoundCloud and iTunes at MDRT Podcast. We'll see you next time.